Hello and welcome back to our webcast series on the topic of plane and descriptive geometry. So in this video we're going to look at how to locate points on an oblique plane using the horizontal sections method. Now this method is quite a useful method and it actually is used in quite a few different topics so uh, in DCG so it's a quite useful one to have a good understanding of what's going on behind the scenes. Uh, we'll begin by first of all explaining the idea of the horizontal sections method. So here we have a setup where we have the vertical trace and the horizontal trace of an oblique plane. So in the elevation and plan view of our plane. And over here we have the 3D of the same thing. So here's our oblique plane and here's our vertical trace where the uh, plane crosses the vertical plane here. And here's the horizontal trace where our oblique plane crosses the horizontal plane. Now the idea of our horizontal sections method is essentially like raising a level of water up along our oblique plane so that it gives us a watermark or a trace um, on our plane like that and it allows us a way to tie our two views together to locate our points. So we'll begin by just showing you the idea of our water level. So if you imagine our horizontal plane here like our ground is like so, our horizontal trace is where our oblique plane and the ground cross well, if we raised up our level of like so like a level of water we can see the watermark that our level of water creates as it rises up is parallel with our horizontal trace so this is the first thing that we must remember there's actually only two things you really need to know one what our watermark looks like in elevation and plan and second of all how to tie the two together so we see here that as our water level rises it's essentially the same angle or parallel to our horizontal trace only it just appears to move in a little bit to the left and this is what we can see over here in our 2D as well so we can see as we would raise our level of water up in our plan view it just appears to move in and it's always parallel with the horizontal trace we can also see that looking in from the front in elevation as our water level rises up it always remains horizontal so this is our horizontal line here this is our watermark in our elevation uh, the second thing to note then is how to tie the two together, both our watermark and elevation and plan view. And you can see the way we tie it together is from where our watermark crosses our vertical trace here. If we look at our 3D view, this is our watermark on our plane like so. When our watermark meets the back wall, our vertical plane, that meets on a point on our vertical trace like so. So in our elevation when we have our watermark like so where it meets the vertical trace we know that's the point where it meets the back wall and we know that when we look from above in our plan view the back wall is represented by our XY line. So our XY line here in our front elevation represents the ground but in our plan view it represents the back wall. So we're able to tie our two views together by taking this point and just projecting it down into our plan view there's where it is in the back wall and that's where it allows us to tie our two views together. So let's put this idea in action here and go with a scenario where we have a point P. Here we have it in elevation and we want to locate it in our plan view. So over here we can see point P in our 3D is on our oblique plane. And what we're going to do is raise our level of water up until it's at the same height as point P is. So looking in from elevation, we know that our water level is just going to simply look like a horizontal line. And we know that the way we tie our two views together is by taking our water level where it hits our vertical trace, we know is a point on our back wall. So this is going to give us point X here. We're going to project that down into plan view. The XY line represents the back wall in plan view. So that's going to give us our point X in plan view. We know then that our watermark is parallel to the horizontal trace in our plan. So we go parallel to our horizontal trace in plan view. And we know that P is going to be directly above the plan view projection. So there's P in our plan view. Now one thing that students can get confused about when they look at this is they, some students say, well, why is there X twice in elevation? And the answer is X isn't represented twice in elevation. Sometimes they look at this X here and say, well, why is X on the ground? And remember, the XY line represents the ground only in elevation. In our plan view, when looking from above, the XY line here represents the back wall. So here's X in elevation. This is X in plan view. It's not the ele in elevation. 
So this is our example of where we have P when we start at an elevation. So let's do exactly the same thing, only this time we're going to start off with P in plan view. So it's the same thing, only in reverse. We're going to raise up our level of water like so. And this time we're going to start for our plan view. So we know that our watermark is going to be parallel to our horizontal trace in plan view. We're going to continue it on until it hits the back wall here. And we know that that's going to be our point in our elevation on our vertical trace. So we're going to project it up onto our vertical trace. That gives it locates as our point, which we're going to project across then giving us the height of point P. We know that P is going to be directly above the plan view projection of it. So that's P located in elevation. So now we've l used our horizontal sections method to locate P when we start off in elevation and in plan view. And really, no matter how complicated the part or uh, surface that we're dealing with, it's only made up of a series of points. So once you know how to find one point, you can find any number of points and any number of shapes that are contained on an oblique plane. And our next video is going to do just that. We're going to look at various shapes and how to locate them on our oblique plane. And we're also going to see how we can use an oblique plane to locate the cut surface on a cut solid. So this is a very useful method for that. So that's the end of the video and uh, as always I hope this has been of some use to you and stay tuned to our videos for more information. Thank you very much.